in that. And uh, she has, there is nobody that I can possibly think of that is more pro-life than Jeff, right here. And for that reason, uh, they have those in the opposition, those that don't, that don't really want to stop child killing, uh, like Ohio Rights Life, those who just want to regulate it, that's why they, they're against her. Okay. And so anyhow, she is as pro-life as you can get. She's running for the Senate. And I'm going to say that we would be blessed to have her, and I'm going to work as hard as I can for her. With that, Jan, pulls your order. By the way, she's her mother's daughter. <laughs> I, uh, I want to say thanks, Pastor. Uh, the reason I'm bold is because uh, I learned from, from the best. Uh, I was uh, just out of high school, and I would sit at the feet of Ernie Sanders and before he was pastor. That's why sometimes I slip up and forget that. But he uh, he's the guy who would say, no, 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 don't, don't worry that you're the only one at Cleveland State. Just step out and do something. And so we did. And I was president of Students for Life, and we went from there. And and, uh, and I, I want to say thank you again publicly for all your time. It's the real deal. The real deal. <coughs> um, I, I see Pastor as a, Ernie, Ernie is that Pastor Ernie is a, a John the Baptist. He really is. He's just blazing the trail for all God wants to do. All right, so I'll keep this short. I just want to give you a, a report from the campaign trail. Um, Y'all are being played. There's a game going on, and we are being played. Anybody here live in Medina County? Anybody south? Okay. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to recruit you on the team anyway. Because right now, how many people listen to Christian radio? Do you ever listen to Fish? Okay, so what stations do you listen to? Shout out. Fish? 1220. 1220? 1230-23. is a non-commercial. What else do we have? 
Republican House and a Republican Senate. And, and this guy wants to, Larry Alrock, wants to be president of the Senate. That's the definition of his health. He says he's against Obamacare. And yet, when Obamacare funding is before him in the budget, guess what he does? He votes for it. So he says he's against Obamacare. His postcards say he's a champion against Obamacare, but his voting record says he votes to fund it. There's a problem with that. It's a problem with the truth. So here's what I'm finding. I got a call today from a polling firm, and they asked me, was I favorable or unfavorable to Larry Alba? And favorable or unfavorable toward Janet Porter? And I said, well, you know, I have some pretty clear answers on that. I give the answers of what I believe. And I said, which way is this poll going? Said, well, it looks like we're leaving in Janet. It's good. Because there was another poll done a month ago that had to get even. The phones, when we get the message out on the phones, we're showing three to one advantage for us. Here's the deal. The scam is this. This is the scam that's been the establishment has played on us for all this time. They have so much money. A million, I'm told he's going to spend a million dollars. And if we can get the truth out, we can just get the truth out in their hands, we win. Here's one way you can tell. How many people here know somebody that lives in Medina County, Ashland County, or Richland County? Like that's Mansfield? Okay, you know something? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of how many people do you know in, in Ashland County, Medina County, and Richland County? And then I want you to go over to that table and take as many postcards as you know people. Fill out the address and, and say, this is who I support if you do, um, and then send it while we still have time. The personal message to someone you know, I'm just going to tell you something. Every single vote is going to count. This is so, you heard this, it's so right. But, but, but so few people vote in the primary that the people you know may be the ones that make the difference. I'm not kidding. By the way, he's got some high pressure techniques he's going out there. He's got paid staffers going out. I don't paid staffers. You want to paid staffers knocking on the door, high pressure with, a, with an envelope sign, saying, if you don't put an envelope sign up, then I'm going to lose my job. Really? And you need to find a different job. Um, by the way, the new postcards that we're getting out that will be in the mail, these ones are my favorite because they've got the graphic image of what we're dealing with. I'm a guy, also supported by the American Family Association, as John Tim Wildman's group. The American Family Association actually Pretty much. sees it from the CCB, endorsed me. They put out an I voter guy that says this. Uh, Janet Bolger Porter. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to put it all up on YouTube and, and then I'll try to email you that section. Who, I have nothing to do with this. This is a very independent uh, voter guy that I've used for many years before I ever thought about running. Okay, I mean. Uh, this is the reason I'm running. Yeah. The very reason I'm running. Is this guy yeah, I've got, I've got the uh, Tea Party's email address so also. So yeah. And I can actually uh, mail the actual clip right to him. I was going to pass the right to him.
just there's no way. There's no way you could have possibly. One, they did four mailings a day. You oversized the Coast Guard. They did three push pole calls. They didn't advertise like you wouldn't. There's no way you could have pulled it off. I said, no, John. 60, 40 us. He says, you are kidding me. And we ended up winning 60, 40, even though they spent the amount of money you would take to buy a house. John Keith said they actually spent more against me for the Central Committee than they did against him, part of the Congress. So I've already seen what God did. I feel a little like David, that the God that delivered me from the paw of the bear and the paw of the lion that delivered me from the Swiss. The God that delivered the election in, in not only in uh, uh, the Central Committee race, but also in 2000. You all remember 2000. 2000 elections, Al Gore versus George W. Bush. I was in Broward County, Florida at the time, and I prayed ridiculous prayer. Did you ever pray a sun stopping prayer? Yeah, you know what it's like. Joshua, by the way, who, who, who didn't just stand in the tent and say, help us win the victory. No, we got to get out of the tent and can't fight. David Mark says, God doesn't just sweep in and save a nation. He loses people. Right? But I, I was part of the, the recount team in 2000, and on election night, they declared the election for Al Gore. My dad's on the phone saying, I don't think, those, I don't think that's right. Well, you know, they declared, well, you know, they declared it's on every station. Fox News is even reported. Every station is reported. And I look at the phone and I got down on my knees and I said, right when Marsh says that I'm the one responsible, but there were a lot of people who prayed. But I got on my knees and I said, God, I'm asking for something that never been done before. I'm asking you. It's ridiculous. It sounded ridiculous. It's hard to even form it in my mouth, but I, I formed the words. I said, God, I'm asking you to change the results of this election. That's what I prayed. God changed the results of that election. So, not to do that, he can help us take out the majority whip who's blocked the heartbeat bill for now more than five years. That's what I know. So we're getting the word out, um, but, but it's gonna take, it's gonna take, it's gonna take, I need help. I'm coming here because I need help. I told Pastor, I said, Pastor, I need to be walking doors. The only reason I'm outside the district is because of because my, my devotion and my respect for, for Pastor Ernie. Because nobody else would keep me away from this district, but I'm doing it for you on a pulpit big help. That is, get on the phone and say, Larry Oppoff, he's the guy that voted the fund of monitoring. What do you mean, Larry Oppoff? Pro-life? He's the one blocking the pro-life parking bill. I wouldn't even be moronic if Larry Oppoff had passed the bill. We say, well, it's not just up to one person. We actually asked him, when you sign a discharge petition, you sign a sheet of paper that says, I want to protect, have the opportunity to protect, 20,000 babies this year and next year, and the year after. Will you sign a piece of paper? He said no. Let me ask any one of you here. If I were to say, we need 17 names on this sheet of paper, but will you be one of them? Will you sign it? Is there anybody here that would not sign? You have to think about it. Let me think. I couldn't, I couldn't sign it fast enough. Think about it. You could end abortion if 17 people out of 33 in the Senate sign a piece of paper. And that's what we asked him to do, and that's what Larry Alboff refused to. <laughs> That's the guy that's trying to say he's the most pro-life. He said, there's no one more pro-life than Larry Yawbaugh. That's what he said. Wow. Wow. He's talking about his life. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, too. You know, we talk about Common Core, and, and, and he's saying he's hard on Common Core. Never introduced a single bill to repeal it. Um, but yet he's, he's renaming all kinds of bridges. Shoreway up in Cleveland, he renamed it. As a co-sponsor of the bill, he renamed it the Dick Celeste uh, Memorial. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's lived in Ohio long enough, I remember uh, being under the Dick Celeste regime. A Democrat who does not deserve the honor of a Republican. Goes, really? That's who you want to honor? That says something about you, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, they also named the, the, the Neil Armstrong Memorial Bridge, which is Memorial Highway, I guess it was, but the deal is this. Um, if, if Neil Armstrong had been forced to be educated by common poor, Nobody would be remembering him because he never would have made it to the moon. We're focusing on a whole bunch of fluff. While, while the, you know, we're decorating the house, we're putting up new curtains and, and painting the walls when the foundation is cracked into. So he introduced a bill, Larry Alboff sponsored a bill that honored Lucasburg cheese. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know he's doing stuff for a while. Bloody fan, huh? I just happen to think, <laughs> nothing against cheese, but I just happen to think children matter more than cheese. Yeah. So so he, uh, he's been busy doing all kinds of renaming everything you can imagine. 
uh, and uh, in honoring uh, the, the runners up to the girls tennis team. That's right, she didn't even win. But okay, uh, okay, he's got all kinds of time to do all kinds of fluff. I want to go down there and I want to do substance. I want to repeal Common Core, but that's just the start. If you repeal Common Core, if anybody that knows me and knows anything about Big Dash, I don't want to just react and respond and defend a shrinking piece of real estate. I want to advance the kingdom of God. I want to take back ground. I want to make advances. And one of the ways I want to do that is with a bill that, that I was trying to get a hold of to get out during our freedom parties with the film debate. It's a thing called the Education and Emancipation Law. What it is, it says that, that, that parents, Christian parents, let's just say you want to you uh, send your kid to a Christian school. Right? You're double dipped. you got to pay that tuition, and then you've got to pay for a failed government school too. There's something wrong with that. What we need to do is not vouchers. Vouchers, I'm not a big voucher fan, but it turns out vouchers, they say it's Governor Shekels, Governor Shekels, we've got to have rules and regulations against them. The Christian, yeah, it doesn't count for home school. No, no, it's your money. It's your money. And we're going to let people with a tax exemption keep their money and spend it the way they choose. If you want to send your kid to charter school, if you want to send your kid to a Christian school, if you want to homeschool, and if you want to send your kid to a government school, I don't recommend it, but you have the freedom to do that. By the way, people say, well, that'll hurt the government schools, that'll hurt, no, no, no. I think instead of a government school with a captive audience dumbing down a generation, frustrating them, what we need to do is raise the bar. Because when they see the exodus of children going to better places, they're going to say, well, maybe, maybe we need to raise the bar. So we keep some students here. Maybe we shouldn't be uh, implementing the indoctrination program of common. Maybe we shouldn't be frustrating kids. I talked to a girl uh, Wednesday at the church. She said to me, I'm getting a C. I'm struggling. I used to get A's. Now I'm struggling to get a C in math. I have a friend who told me she wanted to commit suicide because of common court. Frustrated kids. Parents come to teachers and they can't even do it. It's a mile-long piece of paper just to do an addition problem. Because they think you they think you do 42 circles and you do really? And, and circle the one, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's purposeful. And we've got a bunch of cowards in office that won't challenge you, that won't do what it takes. I don't want to go to the Ohio Senate. I didn't even want to run. Denver knows this. I asked for a dozen people to run. If you've been in the district, I would ask you. In fact, I did ask them to run for another office. I've been recruited. In fact, when I went to my husband, I said, no, I can't find anybody to run. A dozen people turned me down. I expected my Florida boy husband to say, well, good, because we're moving to Florida. I don't want to be in this freezing cold place. There's no 60, 67 degrees outside. It's so wonderful. I need your prayers because I'm struggling. I feel guilty. I'm not knocking on doors right now. But here's, here's God to make up for. But here's what he said. He says, what are you going to tell all those people who are recruiting to run? That's really good for you. I'm glad that you took that. I'm glad you went through the trouble, but it's just, just too much effort for me. So you're going to go around the country, tell everybody about the God of the impossible that you serve, and then back down because it seems impossible. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I had a neighbor come over and tell me, you just kind of like the witness. Where is very well life? He's established. He's very close. No back shelter. Establishment. And uh, he told me all the reasons why I couldn't possibly win. I wake up the next morning, my husband says, what do you want to do? My answer to him was this. I would rather, I would rather run and lose than wonder my own whole life. Because I believe, I believe this is our chance to save and to protect the most lives. We can save babies with a heartbeat. What happens if we pull this off? You know what I know what's going to happen? If I take out the majority of who's slated to be the next president of the Senate, they're going to be a birth You know the story of, 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 of um, Jonathan and his armor bearer? You know that story? John is armor bearer. He says, hey, if they tell us to come on up, the Philistines are all up there. If they tell us to come up, we'll take it as a sign from God. In other words, they give up their one advantage as a surprise. The surprise the only advantage they have to attack the Philistines. But they said, we're going to trust God. And then they're, they're, they're on a lower ground. They're in a very vulnerable, completely, completely uh, uh, a vulnerable position. And they said, he says, hey, he said, come on up here. We want something to show you. That's what the Philistines say to John and Carl. But God was looking at that. And he says, look at that. Look at, those, look at the faith of these two. And he goes up there, they have one sword, I think, between the two of them. They climb up the, the mountain, they get there, and they slay the Philistines. Here's what's interesting. There's an earthquake, a literal earthquake that follows. Here's what's interesting. The, the, the Israelites, who are hiding out in caves, get wind of this victory. And they come out of hiding, like so many Christians, 
that are hiding in caves. And they come out in hiding and they join the battle. And then, there, here's the other part, there's people who are wearing the Philistine armor. The ones fighting on the wrong side, they sold out. They see the Israelites winning, they take off their Philistine armor and they join the Israelite army. This is what I expect to happen. God gives us the victory and I believe he will. Will I still love him? Will I still trust him? Will I still thank him? Is he still the God of the impossible whether I win or lose? Yes. But you don't have it because you don't ask. And I'm asking. And I'd ask you to join me in asking and doing something about it. So if God, and I believe he will, give us this victory, I expect there to be an earthquake. Not necessarily a little or little earthquake, but an earthquake. A political earthquake. Where people come out of hiding. Those who, well, I wanted to sign your, Chris Jordan, I, I'll sign your discharge petition. He writes to me on Facebook, I'll sign your discharge petition. And then when I ask him, will you sign it? His staff says, no, you know, no, no. His establishment doesn't want to take he might lose his vice chairman or chairmanship of a committee. He doesn't want to now. Really? And then those other people who, who say, uh, you know, this bill is the wrong time. The court might say no. It's blah, blah, blah. They're, they might actually say, hold on a second. If Janet Porter can take out the next president of the Senate, then they could take out me just as easily. Right? And so what I believe and what I want to do, can I tell you what I want to do? We win this. By the way, we're going to have, for the first time, Pastor, you know this, the first time in memory. I don't remember really when we had a pro life champion. Tim Grindel was as close, but I'm talking about an activist, innocent, who says, Come here, Pastor. This is your headquarters. Come here. You want to fight Common Core? Use my office as a home base. Come here. This is, this is home to those who want to change the course of history for the kingdom of God. We never had that. I've lobbied for, for more than a decade in Ohio. I've never seen it in the Senate. In the House we have, not in the Senate. So, so all right, so we're going to have we're gonna have a place that we can go to. We're going to have a platform. We're going to be able to do all these things we dream about doing. And then I want to, 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 to write down and to video everything I've learned. And then I want to recruit candidates all over the state and all over the country. That's what Franklin Graham's doing. He's going to state by state. And he's saying, we need Christians. The, I don't trust the Republicans, he says. I don't trust the Democrats. I trust men and women of God, pastors, Adventists, Christians, who are leaders, who will come out and say, influencing the elected has not worked. We must become the elected. That's where it is. I didn't want to do it. The more I think about it, the more excited I get about what we could do for the kingdom of God. So I didn't promise to myself, I haven't kept it all fully, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. Um my God right here. By the way, uh the show of hands again of those who say they know people who live in Medina County. Pastor, do me a favor, could you grab some of those uh some of those postcards for me? Yep, I, I will. pass those out. Here's what else I want to pass out. Alright, this is very low campaign budget, all right? So the green card that I took out of my recipe box today because we ran out of campaign cards. Here's what I want you to do. I want to leave here today without your name and your email, your address, and your phone number, and I'll tell you why. Because we're going to build an army. We're going to take our state back. That's the only thing they care about is who's going to take their jobs away. We're going to build an army. And we're going to do it not just in my district, but in your district. And in districts all over the state and all over the country, we're going to build a list. This is for you. You know somebody. If you know somebody, all you gotta do is mail it. Yeah. The, the comparison one is better than that other one. You wanna get those out first? Here's I I have to hand this out to people who are they're secure in their masculinity because they're pink. <laughs> hey mom, yeah. can, you, can you send this out to the second half of the room here? What I'm looking for is your is your your name. I need your name. I want your name, your email, your address, and your phone number. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, come to your door. But what we ought to do is we're going to build a list wherever I go. I'm going to take, I'm going to take names. And we're going to build an army. And we're going to take our country back. And, and honestly, I have repent to God that I have not been very diligent in getting names. I go and I speak and I lead. And the, the people who want to do something are, are, are who knows where to reach them. Well, now we know. These are the activists. These are the doers of the word. That's what I want. So if you know more than one person, take more than one card. 
And all you need to do is put a regular 49 cent stamp on these postcards, and, and you can send them to, uh, to, to people um, who live in Medina, Ashland, or uh, Richland counties. A little, little portion of the top north, the northeast uh, portion of, excuse me, northwest portion of Holmes County also. You know anybody in Holmes County? We're open it up for questions, but I want to, I want to say this. If, if you live cautiously, if, if that's, that's how you, if you live cautiously, your friends will call you wise. That's great. You didn't run, well, that's really wise. Because chances are not really great you're going to win. You, you know what, you live cautiously, that, that's, that's really smart. You're gonna, if you live cautiously, you will also most likely not slay any giants, not move any mountains. And what I believe is what God's Word says, and our motto reiterates, is that, 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 that with God all things are possible. If you believe that, show me, show me by your actions what you believe. What impossible thing have you, have you stepped out to do? What did they say could not be done that you said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if God might, just like Jonathan and his armor bag, there are two people taking on the Philistine army at a disadvantage, climbing up a mountain. And God says, you know what, I'm going to honor that act of faith. You know what Jesus' big concern was when he said he, when, he comes, when he comes back? He says, when I return, what was his big question? Well, I find well, faith. Well, I find faith. Well, I find faith. I want to say yes. You know, a lot of people want to give up on America. And yeah, we've got a lot of maybe there's a judgment coming, but let me tell you what I believe. I believe that if there's hope, if there was hope for Nineveh, then there's hope for America. And then God said he's looking for someone, looking, seeks, tries to find the ones who are willing to stand in the gap so he doesn't have to destroy them. A remnant can save a nation. A remnant can turn a nation. And that's what I count. Let's open it up for some questions. Anybody have some questions? Like. 
house. That's what I'm doing. Not only am I disliked by every Any instructionist extra rubber band? in the Senate, I'm also disliked by a group called People for the American Way. You ever hear of them? Uh, okay, they hate the American Way. You're all very educated. You listen to the Catholic program. Well, uh, they hate the American Way. They hate life. They hate marriage. They hate America. And they have a group called Right Wing Watch. And Right Wing Watch, what they do is they go and they follow everybody that they consider to be a threat to their leftist agenda. And it uh, turns out that, you know, they hate Ted Cruz, and they follow Glenn Beck, and they got to look at the women. So I think it's smart about the anti-choice Janet Porter running for the state house. I'm like, all right, so I don't look at their art. I never read their stuff. Just why? Why? Although my husband can pick them out of crowd. They, they've been following me around for, for more than a decade. And he says, yeah, pull that guy right there. Right one watch. Third row, second seat, right one watch. I know. I know. So, so he's got to serve it. So, so. They, uh, they've been following me, and it turns out the most watched woman in America, anybody, any guesses who the most watched woman is? Nope, no, nope, not number one. Michelle Bach. Michelle Bach, that's right. Former, yeah, former congresswoman and, uh, and, and candidate for president, Michelle Bach is number one. Uh, number three is Sarah Palin. Number two, believe it or not, is me. They actually have more articles about what I've been doing than they do about Governor Sarah Palin. Are you kidding me? That says they consider me to be a threat. If you're willing to help me, um, I plan to deliver that on that threat. To threaten everything that, uh, that they want to, uh, to unravel and destroy this country. Promise. It's a promise. And that's right. Any other questions? Yes,
say, move to amend. Mr. President, move to amend with a heartbeat bill. We attach the heartbeat bill to this bill. And they say, no, we're not going to do that. Right, roll call. I want a roll call vote where everybody's on record. You want to be against the heartbeat bill? Then we're going to use that in the election against you. That's, that's what we're doing right now. We're using it. We're going to make sure everybody knows these are the obstructionists. These are the people who are allowing babies to die. One of, one of Larry Alcoff's bill, bills was a license plate. You read names of the license plates, maybe four. And well, we've got a license plate that says, Babies fall for all. Oh, so nice. Except there's 100,000 children in this state that will never play baseball because their bodies are in a landfill because Larry Alcoff would refuse to protect them. That's it. So, we can complain about government, we can wring our hands for another generation, and we can march for another 43 years to end abortion. But if you want to go a different direction, you don't want to march for 43 more years and stand out and hold the signs for another 43 years, then, then we need to do something different. We need to do something different and make a change. By the way, uh, a high rise life is going out shilling for Larry. Here's what they're saying in campaign events. This one from our high rise life. Here, I can direct quote. Our incremental approach is working. Really? Because it's not working for more than 20,000 babies every year. It's not working. And then I looked at National Right to Life, what they wrote in their in their uh, their declaration of their progress. They said we at National Right to Life were making such progress, we're down to over a million abortions a year. Your progress is after 43 years. Is only killing 43 million babies a year, then we got a problem. That bar is way too low. Switch directions. Because as Dr. Wilkie said, that incremental approach of asking for a millimeter of a loaf of bread and wondering all why all we ever get is crumbs, it's not working. It doesn't go far enough, fast enough, 43 years, because we've done the incremental approach. And I was a part of that. And I confess to God, I thought that was the best we could do, passing parental consent, right to know partial birth, fetal homicide. I, I want to pass all those bills. But I've come to the place where we're, we're, we're 43 years and we still have, we still have abortion on demand for more than a million babies, more than 20,000 babies every year in the state. Too much. I, I, I saw a guy at that uh, preterm abortion bill, or a woman came up to me, and I recognized her. We've been involved so long, but I, I, I'm not real great with names yet. Yet. I'm saying that with a with, with hope for the future. That. This woman just looked at me and I, and she hugged me and she goes, you look the same. It's nice to hear you lie. Um, but, but I asked her, I said, I, I said, it's so good to see you. She says, she's in her 80s, she's like 84 years old. And it just broke my heart. She was my age. She's now in her 80s. I'm still having one. It's time to win. We have yeah. a God in the universe that can give us the ability to win. Thank you very much. I want to take some charge. By the way, if people want to get can I mention that, Pastor?
What do you got? What else? What the fuck, sir? Yeah. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. 